This is Twit. Mike said uh, from Ireland, love the show, stumbled across it some years back when wondering one day what happened to the lads from the screensavers. He says, a show I watched in my younger years. Aww. Yes, Mike, we were all younger back then. Little did we know. <laughs> We'd Don't make me show here. any video because we really were <laughs> uh, younger. Yeah. Yes. Um, he says, being a solution architect for a large multinational telecommunications company in Europe now, I immediately started listening to Security Now, and it's provided invaluable info ever since. Thank you. In regards to your piece last week on rogue telecommunications devices found in Chinese inverters, very recently, the Iberian grid collapsed for an extended period. Yeah. yeah. Spain two, was offline. Yeah, it was was yep. was blacked out. Yeah. 2.2 gigawatts of solar generation tripped out in the south of Spain. The country had been running on 90% renewable energy in the moments before the collapse. Wow. He said I immediately wondered about the possibility of a cyber attack, but we're unlikely to ever find out if it was, I suppose. In any event, this collapse event does demonstrate how vulnerable inverter technology makes modern grids as we move away from the massive spinning machines of yesteryear to generate our electricity. The very nature of these massive machines, and there he's talking about hydroelectric turbines in, in dams, helped stabilize grids and maintain nominal AC frequency in the face of ever-fluctuating demand. And he's absolutely right about that. He says, inverters, as you likely know, cannot perform the same task as they are instead designed to match grid frequency. They cannot work to maintain nominal hertz, even as it drops under load. Seems we're naive, we've naively introduced significant vulnerabilities into our grids in a race to meet net zero. What's the Chinese word for blitzkrieg, anyone? All the best, Mike. This guy has an axe to grind. I don't buy it. <laughs> I don't, well, because nobody's putting these inverters directly on the grid. You have a battery system or some other intermediate system storing uh, the electricity i'm sure no they are on the grid and they did bring the grid down is that what happened in spain the inverters uh, no, brought it no it's what it no it, it has it did happen last november in several locations it was a remote chinese signal did shut oh. down inverters oh yeah and, that sure and, oh yeah yeah so we uh, <laughs> we absolutely don't know what happened in spain and, right. and he's he's not suggesting that we do he said we're never going to know for sure but I thought it was interesting about this whole issue of a grid and why running a large power grid really is almost as much art as science. I mean, obviously, you need a lot of science. Um, it turns out that having unused excess power capacity is expensive, like, you know, if it's unused because you still have to have it and it's wasteful if it's not being paid for. So. The other factor is that move, moving large amounts of power over great distances is expensive due to transmission losses. So the way the grid is set up, you know, large and distributed power grids are typically being fed from many smaller local sources to prevent those transmission losses, while at the same time, everything is also tied together, thus in a grid so that instantaneous variations in demand which are occurring constantly can briefly be fed from other connected sources so over time if there is a net power flow across some particular power provider boundary then somebody will be paying the other side for the difference but it averages out overall over the long term so it's all a large collective the reason a portion of a grid suddenly going down can deprive a much larger area of power is the inherent interdependence of these subgrids they each depend upon the others and also provide to the others but only at the margins if a significant piece of a power uh, of a grid's power input were to suddenly disappear, 
the demand from all of those that are still drawing power from that grid in the region, which pr- just before its disappearance was balanced at, s- at supply and demand, um, it's still there. It's not going to disappear. This results in the grid's voltage and to some degree, its frequency being pulled down, which can be catastrophic for many systems. It is far better to have no voltage than low voltage. In fact, that the frequency drop was what they think caused the Spanish black. Ah, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it was a we, cascade we, of failures, which is often. Right. Case, yeah. You know, we've all heard of the so-called brownout rather than a blackout, which is, you know, what you don't want to have. So to prevent this occurrence, neighboring subgrids that would like to be there to provide some marginal makeup power for their connected neighbors must quickly decide at what point to abandon that effort of like supporting the neighborhood uh, in favor of saving themselves so that they're also not brought down because they're trying to supply too much marginal power to someone they're connected to. And so when too much power is being pulled from an, an adjacent subgrid, that grid will quickly be cut off so that adequate power can continue to be supplied to the other subgrid's primary customers. So, you know, they they want to help, but they just can't let themselves get hurt in the process. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below. Security now.